Hey brothers and sisters, it's Paul here. Um, I have a new dream to share with you. I had this one this morning and I believe there was a lot of um, urgency to it. So you probably think that I say that a lot and I don't know why. That's, that's kind of the ministry I guess God gave me because I'm saying things that a lot of people don't want to hear. So I try very hard never to interject my opinion, but today I'm going to say a little bit of it. So before I start this dream, people, and this dream was about the urgency to repent. And it's shown in a way for me to understand. So I'll explain it as I go. But each and every one of you, who are chosen and you know who the Lord is and you know the gospel and you know people in your life you're supposed to talk to but you, you choose to be scared you have to understand that by you not telling them they will go through tribulation you have the power to explain to them why it's so important to understand and to, to come to the Lord it's a free gift of grace Please, please take this seriously. You know, some of you already know this, so I'm not worried about you. Just like Jesus said to the apostles, he's not worried about the 99 righteous. He's worried about the one lost. And you have somebody in your life like that. So, moving on. I said that. <laughs> Don't feel good about it, but I'm proud that I said it because that's what Jesus said to the 12 apostles. All right, so here we go. I had a dream this morning. Actually, another thing, before I start this, have you noticed you guys are being woken up in the middle of the night on the fourth watch? Have you noticed that? After three, four in the morning, you don't understand why? Well, with, if you do, that means pray. If you're shown somebody in your dream, that's who you pray for. It's happening for a reason because we are in the end of times. And I mean, I'll even go as far as thinking that this very well may be the very last year, in my opinion. And I'm basing that on something of the Essene. If you don't know who the Essene are, they're the people that wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they're also the ones that trained John the Baptist. And I'll leave it at that. But their last prediction, the only one left, the only one left is the year 2025. The same way they predicted that the Messiah would be born 2,000 years ago, their last prediction is 2025. These are my words. These are what I read. Okay, here we go. So I had a dream this morning, and I was with old friends who were brothers. Now these were John, Mike, and Dan. These were three brothers I played baseball with for close to a decade. My entire baseball team was getting ready to play, and I saw a scene where we used to go camping together or rent cottages. We'd go wherever we had to go to play ball, and we'd all hang out. So in this dream, I had a setting. It looked like a cottage, and People were, you know, getting up at the beginning of a day like you're going to a baseball tournament. But in this case, they were getting up to go practice. So I wrote, I saw them all get up at a friend's house and all got into huge cars. I saw myself driving a big blue Dodge Fury. I thought this was hilarious because I used to do demolition derbies when I was younger. So if anybody of you know anything about these derbies, Specific cars are the strongest, and that was the ones I used to always use. These big Dodge Furies, they were tanks. In fact, the first one I ever used, after I, I didn't win that one because it was the very first time I did it, I ended up selling it to a friend, and he was in two other demolition derbies with it, and one of them he won it with, just to tell you how tough these cars are. So anyway, it was a good car to go into battle with because it fit a lot of people in it. I think we used to put like six to eight people in there sometimes. And I rode Demolition Derby. We all piled into a few cars. Mine was the strongest. And we were off to battle, which was, in this case, baseball. Uh, my friend Daniel, who's, he's actually the guy that brought, we were two separate teams. He brought us together. And in the setting of this dream, he was always the one going out first to organize this team for practices. And his... The urgency that Dan had in this dream to prepare for the game we were going to have, the final game, it was unbelievable. This is a great guy, hung out with him for years, but in this dream, he was bold and 
the urgency had was stronger than anything I'd ever seen in real life. So I wrote Daniel uh, 70th week as a side note. We went out and some players were missing. Some people were not coming to practice. So just like Christians, a lot of people know about what they need to do to prepare. They just ain't showing up. So at practice, a few players were missing. <clears throat> And people were batting the ball and they were flying into the wilderness in the woods, which was, you wouldn't practice baseball in the woods, but in this setting, this is how lost they were. And I was the only one that could go find the balls. So I would run through the woods, get the ball. And I just kept seeing this guy. And I remember in the dream thinking like, why are they playing in the middle of the wilderness in the woods? But that's just to show how lost some people are in the world right now. So some of us being uh, among them could always find the baseballs, we, whereas the other ones were always lost. And the practice was to get better, to be prepared. So that was the end of the dream. I woke up at 5.14 a.m. this morning. When I looked it up, it was a Matthew 3.8. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. So in the dream setting of a practice, for being prepared for a game is us repenting to be prepared fill your lamp think of the ten virgins five of them were prepared five weren't that's where we are now but i could tell you out of all these types of dreams i've had this one was urgent hey guys i got interrupted there at the end i uh, just wanted to say love you very much jesus loves you lots and he wants you to know this message have a wonderful day